Studios Original. Welcome to Web Crawlers, the podcast where we do a deep dive into some of our favorite mysteries. Each week, we will introduce our topic, lay out our research and findings, reveal some conspiracy theories, and conclude with our own hypothesis. I'm Allie Siegel. I'm Melissa Stetton. And it's Maria's birthday today. It is. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Hold on. Let me see if I can find something. Maria's doing well. She's alive and well. She's thriving, actually. Hold on. Thriving. Melissa, I'm going to send you a video. Who knows if it's going to be good or not? I haven't haven't fact-checked it. Only one way to find (laughs) it. Fact-checked. I haven't (laughs) fact-checked it. I'm sending it just to you. Oh, and Adam. Always. Always. Kidding me. It's your birthday. It's your birthday to me. It's like death metal birthday song. Let's celebrate. Celebrate the wheels control and you cut the kids. This is awesome. It's your destiny. Oh, wait, wait, wait. So with your closest mates. It's Damn. your birthday, Maria. <laughs> I'm going to send that to Maria now and pretend we made it. It actually looks like something we made. Yes, made two years ago. Mm, we made it today. We made it. I love the comments on these. Grandma's name is Maria. She's so happy. YouTube comments yeah, are the greatest the comment. People All right. Well, happy birthday, Maria. Uh, if you want to wish Maria a happy birthday, then join the Big Ones Patreon. Oh, yeah. They're still doing They do two episodes a month. Yes. That is the best way to support Maria is to either wish her happy birthday on the Discord or to join her mm-hmm. Patreon. So mm-hmm. happy birthday to producer Maria. Where in the world are you? Maybe you've been celebrating your, maybe even, maybe you're a birthday monther, a two monther, and you've just been celebrating your birthday this whole time. That's why she had to uh, take a leave of absence. A leave of absence <laughs> to celebrate her birthday. Listen, we get it. Uh, Melissa, who are our patrons for today? We have Leavers12 and Ben. <laughs> yes very okay. similar okay. names welcome to the team guys this uh exciting stuff is coming your way i'm finally slowly making my way out of the covid depths of despair which means it was got rough for a while it listen didn't know if i was gonna make it but here i am I you sent us you sent a recording of your voice you're like i can't record the podcast <laughs> yeah. today yeah. Like, so right, i can't do the mailbag, the mailbag. Uh, yeah, so, um, but don't worry, I'm out. It turned out I also had a bacterial infection along, or I guess the COVID created it, but I started these antibiotics and I am just... Good as new. I'm in boss dog mode again. (laughs) Okay, this week is episode, it's recommended by Daniel the Orb. Oh, Dantana. Oh, is that Dantana? I was wondering. Yeah. Okay, so this is a Dantana delight episode. And I had a lot of fun this morning watching YouTubes about it. It is about (laughs) Wallaton Park. I mean, two days ago when I wrote the episode, it is about (laughs) Wallaton Park in Nottingham. In England? In in golly, 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 jolly good England, mate. (laughs) Jolly good England, (laughs) mate. Cheerio. Have a spot of tea with the gnomes. (laughs) There is a castle there that was used in the Dark Knight Rises. Oh. Fun twist. Fun fact. Near there, uh, near that park, there's a swamp area where many people have encountered gnomes. Uh Uh-oh. Gnome kidding, huh? The first case of gnomes in this park was in 1979, but there have been many encounters afterward as well. One even as current as 2016. What's the deal with these tiny little freaks? Let's get into it. Now, okay. for all you 90s babies, here's yeah. a little blip of nostalgia. The theme song to David the Gnome. 
Drop that Opening. beat! <laughs> Opening video. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> the classic Ralph's. <laughs> this is the Ralph's cut. This is the Ralph's <laughs> remix of the David the No. Here we go. Here we go. I used to love this show so Loved much. It. <laughs> it's so pure. They're riding on that fog. Now, unfortunately, we learned that this is a Harvey Weinstein production. Oh, no. So David the Gnome is now canceled. Okay, you get it. No, 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 no. You got to play it to the end. That's where it gets really good with the gnome stuff. See why we had to play it till the end? We used to love that That's when the beat drops. All right. So David the Gnome, one of the most uh, treasured shows of our childhood, Mm -hmm. unfortunately canceled now because his name, it was made by Harvey Weinstein. But (laughs) this episode is all about gnomes. So what is a gnome? It's a mythological creature, an urban legend, a cryptid, perhaps. Oh. Introduced by a word I'm going to mispronounce, Paracelsus in the 16th century and later adopted by more recent authors in fantasy literature, but many people believe them to be real. And not yeah, mythical. Absolutely real. Yeah. They're real. The gnomes are thought to live underground, as their name is derived from the Latin word for dweller. Oh. So I guess gnome means earth dweller in Latin. Oh. They were popular. Sense. Yeah, they're popular in German fairy tales, Melissa's homeland. Well, yeah. My grandparents have are gnomes? a collection. They are gnomes. They have a collection <laughs> of garden gnomes. That my grandpa, he's obsessed with the German soccer team. So he painted all the gnomes oh with like the German soccer team jerseys and all the numbers. <laughs> that and is I, ha- so I have one. He, he, he died a few years ago, but I, I ha- we, the family split up all of the, all the, gnomes. the gnomes. That's yeah. like my grandma with her Marilyn Monroe collector's plate that she got on QVC. <laughs> <laughs> Very yeah, similar. Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Marilyn Monroe, the gnome of America. <laughs> so gnomes, popular German fairy tales, described as old men who guarded treasure. So you might be asking, are gnomes hot? I have the answer. Yes, they are daddies. So before beards. Yes, yes, gnomes are daddies. (laughs) They are old men with beards who guard treasure, who wear hats. The first garden gnomes that were mass produced came from Germany in the 1870s, and they became a collector's item. I found an article that was like, garden, the history of garden gnomes is more interesting than you think. But then I was like, this, oh. is, this is long. I can't read it. Um, <laughs> too, too long to read. <laughs> but it was something to do with the king of Sir Charles Isham brought 21 terracotta gnomes manufactured in Germany by Philip Griebel back to Britain where they were called gnomes in English and they were placed in gardens all around. And people thought they were cool and mysterious and they became just a trend, I guess. Oh, I don't know. That so makes I, sense. I guess the royalty started collecting them. So then everyone wanted their own garden. Oh, gnomes. yes. So this is what gnomes are not to be confused with dwarves or elves, although maybe in different cultures, gnomes have different names. Gnomes are smaller, though, right? Are they the smallest? Yeah, gnomes Gnomes are the littlest of guys. Because the dwarves, like Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, like they're small, but I feel like gnomes are like real tiny. Yeah, gnomes gnomes are kind of like fairies, I would say. Right. Gnomes are fairy adjacents. I I feel like a gnome and a fairy could get married. 
I think, don't. Yeah. I mean, I'm pro all cryptid marriage. Sure. But I think. What if a Bigfoot and a gnome. <laughs> or a, a Bigfoot baby? and a fairy. That'd be just an average sized person. It would probably even out. But I'm wondering. They would have to do IVF, I think. Because I don't know how you they're probably. having sex. <laughs> I wonder Speaking if there's a clinic IVF. for that. <laughs> Do you want to make a podcast announcement? Sure. I've already posted this on Instagram and Twitter and the Discord. <laughs> I am having a child. Yeah. I am with child. Is I it a Bigfoot or a fairy? Or... <laughs> it looks like a gnome, actually. It's about the size of a gnome. Currently. Yeah. It, it, honestly, it honestly is. We are so, so excited for you. Um, and I had an ultrasound today and she is in the 69th percentile for her size. And we'd and like to like, insert nice. a big web crawler's <laughs> nice there. So <laughs> congratulations to Melissa. No better place to drop that news than our gnome episode. <laughs> gnome episode. <laughs> <Than> our <laughs> gnome doubt about it. So God. what happened with these gnomes? A group of six school children were wandering around this castle in Wallington Park in Nottingham. They were playing around. It's the late afternoon just to set the scene. And as the sun started to go down, they knew that it was time to go home. And as they're starting to go home, they find this fenced area that blocked off like some marshland in the park. Mm -hmm. It was fenced off and it said like, don't go here. And obviously when you're a kid, if you see something that's blocked off that says caution, do not go go here. Yeah, you're, I'm going to go in there. (laughs) So the kids went into the fenced off area and they're kind of looking around and they start hearing a very distinctive sound which apparently is heard in many gnome encounters. And this is the chime of bells. Chime of bells. Huh. Ding-a-ling-a-ling-a-ling. The ringing of bells. So as they cross this fence-off area, this field, apparently these kids see 60 short Tiny men, short kings, my type, gnomes, <laughs> like from the fables, riding around, this is the best part, in tiny little cars that had no steering wheels <laughs> that looked like bubbles. So self-driving huh. Teslas. Yeah, they were in tiny <laughs> they Teslas. They were in the Tesla prototypes. The okay. encounter, according to the children, lasted about 15 minutes as the gnome cars chased them around the park. <laughs> What? I'm getting Rua vibes. That's what's so interesting. And because they're also interviewed several times and it oh. become, they're interviewed and it becomes kind of a media thing. Oh, wow. But this isn't the only time this happens or the only group this happens to. So oh, that's what's so boy. weird. Okay. So there's a few different stories about what happened here. And this was one that's on strange history. So this group of children, some of them are older, some of them are younger. Once the older group entered the swamps is when this gnome encounter began. The kids sat, found, uh huh. The kids <laughs> saw some movement in the treetops, which is weird because we've learned before that gnome means earth dweller, not tree dweller. But right. who knows? Maybe they were, mm. maybe some were on lookout. Foraging yes. for fruit? For fruits. Yes, they were, class- <laughs> they were classically foraging for some fruits. So then the gnome cars appear and begin to chase the older children. So maybe some gnome gnomes cars. are on lookout at the trees. And then when they see people, then the, yep. the ones in the cars just zoom out. Then two boys fall into a marsh and are covered in mud. Oh, no. Yes. In (laughs) in one account, it's actually the gnomes who drive the kids into the mud. Oh. Yeah. Like chase them. Yeah, they high-speed chase the kids into the mud in their (laughs) little self-driving Tesla (laughs) bubbles. Their Google cars. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So the four 
The four older kids are then reunited with the younger kids. The older kids are like caked in mud from their gnome excursion. They're trying to get out of the park, which is all fenced off. And at this point, it's nighttime because they've been being attacked by gnomes for a while. And they get out into the streets. um, But the gnomes do not chase them outside of this blocked off land. Oh, which there's like a you, force field. Well, which leads you to believe, like, why is this area fenced off anyway? Probably right. the big puddle of mud marshland, so people don't puddle go into of it. Puddle of mud. But, yeah, bro, this is actually, <laughs> interestingly enough, we'll find one of the other stories is this is where Puddle of Mud gets their name. <laughs> okay. Let's take a quick break for announcements. Webcrawlers has a Patreon to get access to bonus episodes, merchandise discounts, shout outs, and more. Please go to patreon.com slash webcrawlers. You can donate as a little as $2 a month to become one of our bimbo patrons or just become a patron because I have had to spend so much money on DoorDash these past few weeks that I <laughs> yeah. am in I am in debt. You now. need to be reimbursed. <laughs> I need to be reimbursed for all the DoorDash I spent. Please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. If you give us a five star review, we will shout you out. Also, as you know, we have a hotline in search jingle here. Six two six six oh four six two six two Continue to call us, call us, continue to call call us, us. and we will continue to play. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Back to our program. So the kids eventually told adults and their parents, but no one believes them. They're like, all right, kids see. And especially in England, I think that's where the whole fairy gate happened. Remember where those kids thought they saw fairies, but then it turned out to be drawings or photos. Right whatever oh yeah so they eventually then told their school headmaster and for some reason the principal's like i buy it i think it's i think it's true (laughs) yeah (laughs) no questions asked Uh, hard yes i do believe that you saw fairies let's get into this he probably was a broke school teacher and and was thought maybe he could make some money off there this yeah so he decided to record conversations with the kids and he sold them to the media and it became a media sensation in nottingham so i have the transcript oh (laughs) there's there's like books on it oh wow and this is from academia.edu so you know it's legit here's one of the first interviews with the headmaster he says can you tell me what happened on Sunday when you went to Wallington Park? I won't do an English accent. I was going to for a second and I decided. I to. will. Okay, good. <laughs> do you have it up? Can you? Yes. Okay, yeah, go for it. Well, we was going to Wallington Park. When we came back, we heard a noise in the forest. And then these men came out about half the size of me. They had these long white beards with red at the bottom. They had little white and red cars, and they were chasing us, and they nearly caught P.O. and P.O. of someone's Name, initials, probably. fell in the swamp head first, so they kept chasing us, and they didn't talk. They was laughing, they was friendly, they was joyful. Blimey! And what time was this? It was about half past eight. So Walleton Park was closed, was it? Oh, n- no, the gate was still open. And was it dark? Yes. Very dark? Not very dark. You could see. And where were you? (laughs) We was in the swamps, where the swamps are. And so there would be street lights in the road there. It would be light enough to see. You're not in any doubt of what you saw? Uh, pardon? You've no doubts at all (laughs) that what you saw was the little men in cars? No. I think I'm New Zealand now. How many were there? (laughs) There's about 60. There's about 30 cars with two in each car. Why do I oh, sound I like John Lennon? <laughs> I didn't there's realize. About 60. There's about 60. <laughs> I didn't realize there's 30 cars with two in each car. Oh, wow. I was thinking 60 cars, but no, there was two in each car. Okay. Did the cars have, did the cars have headlights on? They did have lights, but they weren't on. Dangerous. How fast were yeah. they going? Uh, about 40, 50 miles an hour. Really fast. fast? Yes. Did they have engines? No, you couldn't hear them at all. 
And when they first came out, were you frightened? Yes. Was that the first time you'd seen them? That was the second time. What happened the first time? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? what happened the first time? Well, they didn't actually chase us. We just seen them in the bushes and they ran off. Was that on the same night or was that a long time ago? It was a long time ago, about six weeks holidays. In Wallerton Park? Yes. Was it in the dark? Was it in the dark when you saw them the first time? Yes, they only come out of dark, I think. And there wasn't anyone else around? There weren't any adults there? What were they wearing? Well, they didn't wear trousers. Well, boy, 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 boy. <laughs> well, they did, but they was like tights. It was yellow. Last night they had a blue top on, a blue thin top, and they wore a cap with a big bobble at the end. So they were in tights. <laughs> a blue with... thin shirt. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> and a big bobble cap. Gross. Did you get the impression that they were friendly? Yes, you could tell by the face and the way they laughed. They kept laughing. Yes. Did they, nobody said anything? No. Did you talk to them? No. Did they play with you? Yes. What were they doing then? Chasing us around the trees, like I said. <laughs> they stayed in the cars, did they? I think they did, I'm not sure. Oh, let me see if there's any other interesting questions. <laughs> how long is this? I know, no, don't worry, I'm just seeing how many, <laughs> if there are any other interesting questions. They didn't tell their parents, because they didn't believe them the first time. It goes on, to, they go on to be interviewed a few different yeah. times just to, for consistency to see. I, I was just laughing because uh, they asked if the cars had hooters on them. I guess hooters Ho means, they got hooters. They got hooters on what? them. Honks? I guess hooters Honks? means bells or like a car horn. A horn? <laughs> yeah. Ho they have hooters. I, was gonna, well, I called it a, I was going to say a honker. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> the cars got honkers. They got big honkers. <laughs> Did the gnome cars have big honkers? Um, so that's the uh, account and it, it gets spread everywhere in the news and to this day i mean dantana found it and i guess it how he found it is it resurfaced recently on twitter oh yeah as people talking about these wallington wallington gnomes i've never heard of these uh-huh huh. and the story spread it got media coverage and it became kind of this folklore tale but this is not where the story stops the story does not oh. happen in, yeah i know the story does not stop in the 70s. There have been other sightings as well. This is from Mysterious Universe. Author, researcher, and former secretary of the Nottingham-based Fairy Investigation Society, which we Legit? all know. Yeah, which we all know. <laughs> Marjorie Johnson confirms that there have been other sightings of bubble car driving gnomes in Wallington Park bubble area, cars. in particular near that lake. And she wrote about it in her book, huh. Seeing Fairies. She recounts that one sighting was named by, uh, made by a woman named Mrs. C. George. She saw gnomes playing in the park gates with their cars parked on the side. <laughs> so I guess they parked I their cars and got cars. out. I think that's so insane. Like, are there cars made out of flowers or yeah, what? what are their car i would guess like wood maybe wood like i are, are like is it machinery or i mean what i need to know what their cars are made what are they of. how are they powered are they flintstones cars is it powered by their feet i mean i would imagine yeah like they must be running or something because they're how no advanced sound is this society do they know how to or is it powered by magic build engines it's it's got to be magic. It's right? got to be. I mean, I assume these it's are magic. magic. Yeah, of course it's magic. Yeah, that was so, you sound Duh. you sound so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> the gnomes, Ugh, the gnomes obviously. bubble cars are powered by magic. That was stupid. I'm really sorry. That so was really stupid. embarrassing, listeners. That was really embarrassing. Ugh. In another story, uh, a woman named Mrs. Brown claimed to have been guided around the park by gnomes in a sort of little game where they would give her a feather every time she reached a checkpoint. Okay, I've also played that game. It. I've also That's played fun. that game. So you do find feathers. You <laughs> find feathers, a and it's gnomes. Okay, yeah. here's what I'm putting out into the universe. If I find a feather today, <laughs> it's going to be proof that gnomes exist. Uh, I, yeah, hundred percent. If you listen to this podcast and on the same day find a feather, it's proof. It is proof that gnomes exist. 
Send us your fla- or your feather pictures. Send us your feather pictures because it's proof that gnomes exist. In yet another encounter, a woman named Jean Dixon said that she witnessed gnomes roaming around the park, seemingly eager to show her around their abode. So it's like MTV See, it's- gnomes cribs. <laughs> Gnome cribs. It seems like some of them are friendly and some of them are not. I think that the gnomes with the kids were like playing. Oh, okay. That famous, I'm going to drive my car into you until you fall into the mud game. Love that prank. <laughs> yeah, you know, that you're going to play it with <laughs> you your know. kid. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. She claims that she spied several tiny men about three feet in height frolicking around dressed as policemen. What? <laughs> See, to me, that reads dwarf, not gnome. Yeah, because gnomes, why would they be policemen? They don't need to police <laughs> well, that themselves. That wasn't what I was thinking. I was just thinking three feet is not what I think of a gnome to be. How tall is a gnome? Oh, three feet in height. Oh, yeah, that's too oh, big. Oh, no, it says gnomes are small humanoids standing three to 3.5 feet tall. See, I, w- I think of them as that inches. cartoon. I'm David. thinking inches. Yeah, inches, because they live in the trees, but they're like that Yes, big. I was thinking inches, not feet. Yeah. Well, well, I guess gnomes come well, in every size. Pie, pie on our pie on our face. <laughs> I guess we're policeman gnomes. Yeah. So I guess. So I take it back. I think a fairy and a gnome would probably be not a good yeah. couple, and a gnome and a bigfoot might work out okay. Yeah. After all. Um, yeah, but- okay. So, anyways, there's that. Um, and as recently as 2016, 2016, there have been gnome phenomenon in the park. There is a news report in the Park Herald that railways in the area were being haunted by the miniature humanoids to the point that interrupted services on trains running from Nottingham (laughs) Station to London Street were being blamed on gnomes. That's funny. (laughs) One witness named Daniel Sedgwick, probably related to Kira, probably Kira's brother, (laughs) saw a gnome lurking around in train embankment and said of it, all of a sudden, I caught a glimpse mm. of five small hat-wearing creatures tearing down the side of the embankment just after passing through Attenborough. They're just causing chaos. So maybe that's what's happening in New York, too. Maybe the gnomes are just causing a ruckus on the subway. Every time you're on the subway and it, it gets delayed, there's gnomes down there just and they're, hacking away. And their little blue <laughs> Lululemon leggings and, and sheer <laughs> blue shirts and little fedoras. <laughs> So oh. I have some gnome-related theories. Oh, boy. I looked up the Wallington Park in Nottingham, and I was like, in Rura, is that what it was, Rura? Rua? 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 Whatever. That pla- the, no, the aerial phenomenon, whatever that was. Yeah, wherever that is. We found out that there were magic mushrooms growing there. That's right. So then I Googled, are there magic mushrooms in Wallington Park in Nottingham? And the answer is yes. Uh, mushrooms huh? grow in the marshland there oh. so i'm like do people go there foraging or do the people go there for like picnics and things like that I see bet. the mushrooms and then like eat some and then they start tripping out and thinking they see gnomes i feel like if you ate mushrooms like seeing gnomes is like a thing that could for sure happen like i've done mushrooms and like you just see all these weird little sparkly Yes. Things like around you. Also, if you think about like a marshland, there's probably a lot of mold spores and like you oh, breathe in yeah. the mold spores and you probably are like, what? You know, hallucinate it's a little bit. Mold and mushrooms. Yeah. So that's, I think, I mean, the most realistic thing is that there's actually gnomes. The second most realistic <laughs> things is that there's probably some sort of mold or magic mushroom that people yes. are ingesting or inhaling. Yeah, dangerous. But then there's this question I came across. Why does the park close just before dusk every day? Like the park always... Before dusk. Yeah, it doesn't close at nighttime. It closes right before. And that's allegedly when the gnomes start coming out. And it's just been discovered that there are 500 sandstone caves hidden under Nottingham. Yes. Sandstone caves. Yes. I tried to click on that link and it was disabled. So I'm like, okay, the CIA doesn't want us to know. Sandstone. Ooh. Oh, wow. Those are cool. That's like in Utah. 
But they're under that park. Which, yes. So like there, little tunnels. Yes, there's a cave and tunnel system under Nottingham oh, Park. Oh, wow. That's Which cool. is like, okay, that's where the gnomes live. Subterranean sandstone caverns in Nottingham. The caves of Nottingham. Oh, wow. Yes, which reminded me a lot of... Um, God, what's that show? The Kentucky, the Kentucky Ice Road Truckers. <laughs> no. <laughs> Ice Caves. No, uh, it was a crypt Hellier. Hellier with oh. the Kentucky um goblins where they were living under or they think that they were living under oh, yeah, there's the cave caves systems in, uh, or Kentucky, whatever. Yeah. Um so I'm like, okay, maybe there 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 could be weird shit living under this cave system and then it, they pop up at night. I don't know. Yeah. So that's another thing. These caves theory. are cool. I mean, it could be, it could be anyone. I mean, there could be a unhoused population that's also coming out at night and playing in the park and then kids see them and then make up a story mm-hmm. about them. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, it could be anyone in there. It could be anyone in there. So that's the story of the, the gnomes of Nottingham. I want to go to this park. It looks cool. I know. It does look cool. Oddly enough, that place is no longer fenced around it. It seems to have, the fenced area seems to have mysteriously disappeared. Huh. So who knows what happened there? Gnomes are expanding. Yes, exactly. Uh, They're digging those tunnels uh, to a doorway near you. If you have ever seen a gnome, if you can tell us the difference between gnomes, elves, Dwarves. <laughs> Dwarves. Uh, fairies. Fairies, all that kind of shit. Because uh, we're at a, we're at a loss. Puckwudgies. Puckwudgies. Yeah, we, we need to be schooled in cryptidology. I know John Tenney is probably going to listen to this episode oh, and yeah. be like, you guys be are like, you fucking you're making idiots. a fool of yourself. <laughs> you are making a fool of yourself. Uh, please call in and let us know. Melissa, where can people reach us? You can email us at webcrawlerspot at gmail.com or call us at 626 626- Six oh four six two six two. All right, happy birthday, Maria! I hope no gnomes come into your house tonight and steal your soul. soul. All right, bye, <laughs> bye. <laughs> original powered by ACAST